we're so glad again to have you uh, with us today. And I may need these lights on so I can see my notes. Sorry, my eyesight is bad. Uh, the stage. And I, I wanted to welcome you again. If you're if you're a guest, if you're new this morning, uh, we hope you just make yourself at home and have found a home. I, I love coming together on Sundays, getting to see my church family and celebrating together. How many of you always uh, just love the, the little good moments in life? You just savor in those good moments. It's a blessing to see Wally and Doris Smith sitting out there. They're some of our dear family. We don't get to always have them with us, and y'all are such a blessing. We celebrate things like that. Uh, yesterday, it was, uh, we had a good time. We got to celebrate C.J. Lee turned, what are you, 12 now, I think? Uh, no, he's 15 years old. Today is his birthday, actually. Would you give him a big round of applause? Happy birthday to, to CJ. Uh, we celebrate these things, these joyous moments. But uh, today we want to focus on uh, the flip side of that. Because how many of you know if, if you live life long enough, you're going to go through some sad times? That's just reality. And today we're going to talk about that even when life is sad, that God is still good. And everything that we've talked about these, these last several weeks during this series called Roar, again, we kind of based it around the same lessons we taught our kids in vacation Bible school this year. Uh, but we sometimes will tell our kids these things, like you need to trust God, you need to have great faith, you need to love Jesus and, and be faithful to the Lord. But sometimes we don't do a really good job as adults of, of living that stuff out before them. So we want to make sure we've got understanding that we're being good examples for this up-and-coming generation of the faithfulness of God. And how many of you know that no matter what life throws at you, God's still good? Can somebody say amen to that? He, he, he always is the same. But there, there's many things in life that don't turn out the way we expect. Uh, we got any parents in the room? I know we've got several of y'all have parents. Any of y'all have more than one kid? Y'all have multiple kids? A lot of you. Okay. Uh, I don't know if y'all are like my wife and I. Uh, when we first, oh, actually, when we first got married, before we had kids, I was this way worse than her. I'd look at other people with kids. They'd be out in public and their kid would start fussing. And I'd be like, my kid's never going to throw a fit like that in Walmart. <laughs> any, any of y'all ever seen me in Walmart? <laughs> That's why I'm getting all these lovely white hairs and gray hairs. Uh, yeah, now, now then, I don't even try to not make my kids throw a fit in Walmart. I just try to get as far away from them as I can so they think it's somebody else's kid, you know, just till they're done. Uh, I thought it was going to be one way, you know, I was always like, our kids, uh, before we had Noah, our oldest, he's about to be 11, and before we had Noah, we were always like, we're not going to, uh, Victoria is very health conscious and, and very, uh, you know, mindful of, of being uh, frugal and things like that, so we cloth diapered with our first child, uh, if you ever want to know what hell is like, just cloth diaper your child, you'll, you'll want to go to heaven worse than it, ever, uh, it, it just... It was uh, an experience for us, and, and we, we said they're not going to have a pacifier. You know, they're just we're going we're, we don't want to do all these nothing of these natural things. I think we made it two days before we gave him a pacifier because uh, it was just hard. And I and I said, you know, never am I going to let uh, you know when my kids suck their thumb, it can mess up their teeth. Olivia will be 17 years old sucking her thumb because uh, she's just always going to do that. Uh, you know, you, you plan all these things, but life throws you curves. Uh, life can change. We talked about that last last Sunday. One of the uh, constants of life is that life is never constant. It always changes. And something that happens during this process of change is that we go through times of, of grief, of, of sorrow, of sad things. Uh, there's things that I didn't, you know, understand when I was younger, how difficult they could be. Uh, you know, how many of you know that you can grieve things, uh, and we think of grief sometimes with the loss of a loved one, uh, I, I miss my, my loved ones that have passed away. I, I've got dear friends, some of y'all, that I know have, have gone through the heartache of losing a child. I can't imagine the weight, the burden of that. And, but even things when it's not actually a death. How many of you have ever mourned the loss of a friend? They're still alive, but they're just not the same person they used to be. Or if you've gone through the heartache of divorce and, and known you know, this person that, that you had married, and it's like things didn't work out the way that you thought they would. Or, or you may even have a child or a grandchild who, again, they're still living, but they're not living for the Lord. And, and it's just like a, it's almost like a grief process you have to walk through. There are a lot of those things in life. And, and while I know that's heavy, I know that's a downer, I don't ever want us to give up hope. I don't ever want us to lose sight of that 
even when life is really bad, really sad, really heavy, it never changes the attributes of God. He is good forever and always. And we have to put our faith, we have to put our trust in Him. Again, if, if we're not careful, we'll, we'll put our trust in very, very temporary things. We'll put our uh, trust in the government. God help us. Uh, you know, we'll put our trust in, in y'all. I'm very thankful for those in the medical industry. I'm thankful for doctors. I hope we have a bunch of doctors come to church here and pay their tithe. Hallelujah. But at the end of the day, they call it practicing medicine for a reason. And the best doctors I've ever had are the ones that before they will operate on you, they will pray for you. Because they know there's a higher power. They know there's someone who's really in charge of all this, the great physician. And so we don't ever want to put our trust too much into human temporary things. Because humans can let you down. But God will always lift us up if we'll let him. I'm going to look at a very, I know it's a well-known account in Scripture in John chapter 11. We're going to just walk through kind of the second half of this chapter. And I, I encourage you to, maybe this week, just go back and read all of John chapter 11, the full story of Lazarus. A lot of you are familiar uh, with Lazarus. And uh, I, I know that it's something you may have heard since you were uh, you know, in a kid in Sunday school. But... I want to just pause through this story and let it really soak in today of how we can function the way Jesus does, the way Christ wants us to, even when life doesn't go like we want it to. In John chapter 11, verse 17, it says, On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Look at verse 22. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. May I ask you please to pray for me? and to pray with me just for God's word to go forth the way God wants it, the way he intends it. Would you join your hearts with me? Father God, I'm asking you right now to speak to us as only you can. Lord, uh, help me to decrease so that you, Holy Spirit, can have your way to, to allow your word to come alive in our hearts. Let people be good soil to receive it. And God, grow us to be more like Christ each and every day, I pray in Jesus' name. And all in agreement said... Amen. Now, the first point I want to make to you this morning, if you want to take notes, and again, if you're new, we provide in your worship guides little handouts that you can take notes with us. And we have free back there on the table, little three-ring binders. I'd love for you to take one if you don't have one, just so you can keep your notes with you. And that way, if you ever want to look back on them, you've got a place to keep them. But today, your first blanks that we're going to fill in is the fact that grief doesn't actually change you. It reveals you. You'll hear this in, in both secular and spiritual circles. That grief itself, they've, they've studied this out pretty extensively psychologically. Uh, and even you know, spiritually, you see it all evidenced in Scripture. That grief itself doesn't change us. You might feel like it does, but can I tell you what it really does? It takes down all those barriers you might have put up. You, you really can't fake it anymore like you're okay anybody know what that's like you just you're exhausted because you're trying to pretend like you're okay but then grief just hits and you just lose it have you ever been there before that's when really both ministers and psychologists say that's your truest self is when you're in that deep of emotion that deep of pain of grief and it will reveal things about you and three things that I just want you to jot down quickly it reveals what you truly love. And can I tell you this? It may not be what you thought it was. We sometimes have gotten so good of wearing, you know, the mask, of playing the game, of just going through the motions, of pretending we're okay, that when we really get face to face with anguish, uh, of just tragedy or heavy, heavy sadness, we're shocked at what's actually really important to us. It may not be those things you thought they were. And people that you thought would be there for you, isn't it heartbreaking when they're, maybe they're not really there when you need them? Anybody ever been, been in that boat before? People that you've even been there for, that you've invested in them, but you need them, and where are they? Grief reveals what you truly love. It also will reveal 
what you truly fear. Uh, I thought that, you know, I would reach an age that I would just kind of become okay with things. And, and to an extent, I'm okay with what happens to me in life. I know where I'm going. Can anybody say amen if you're going to heaven? But when you have other people that are counting on you, uh, it changes your perspective on things. When you have family and friends, if you have children, grandchildren, there's things that I really don't fear for myself, but I pray over my kids. I pray over, you know, even my grandchildren that I don't have yet. Because, y'all, this world is changing rapidly every day, and it doesn't seem to be changing for the better. And I don't want them to grow up in a world where they don't hear about Christ. I don't want them to stand in eternity without the blood of Jesus covering them. So I pray over the future. I pray over these things. And it just seems like the, the, that society is getting farther and farther away from God and then more and more we get into trouble, we get into debt, we get into problems. And so as you begin to see those things, that sadness in you, it will reveal things that, that you fear, the, lo the fear of loss, the fear of, the, again, those things that you truly love, you'll, you'll be afraid of losing them. Those things will, will reveal themselves to you. It also reveals what you truly believe. Because a lot of people, and I, again, I'm not trying to point fingers. I don't know your heart. Only the Lord knows our hearts. But a lot of people will say they love God. They will say they really believe God. But when confronted with life's most tragic moments, some people, instead of you know, turning to God, they, they get angry at Him. They, they become bitter. They, they, they're so hurt. And, and they'll miss... They'll mistake that hurt. They'll think that hurt comes from God. And again, I'm going to say this point again and again because I want you to remember this, that no matter what life does to you, remember, it's not God doing these things to us that sin has brought upon us. And so even when life is sad, God is still God. He is still good. We don't just sing, you're a good, good father, and that's only for Father's Day or certain times of the year. God is good no matter what. Can somebody testify to that? The problem that we face is uh, we're spiritual beings stuck in a physical body. And so our spirit may be willing, but the Bible says our flesh sometimes is weak. And we'll think we really love the Lord. We'll think we really have the, the fear of the Lord is the most important to us, you know, the respect of God, and that we really believe in Him, but then we get just really hit hard with that doctor's report, with that loss of a loved one with that loss of your job, just your whole world gets turned upside down in one day. And it just, those things, I know there's never a good time for tragic things to happen, but don't they always seem to come just at the worst times? And then it'll just seem like the, the old adage, when it rains, it pours. It just seems like things pile up all at once. And if we're not careful, we'll allow our view of God to be changed by how life looks at the moment. And because life seems really sad, we'll get mad, we'll get frustrated with the Lord. Martha, in the, in the scripture we just read, she's a little frustrated with Jesus. She said, if you had just been here, my brother wouldn't have died. If you just got here sooner. And that's why I encourage you, read the, the rest of the book. Jesus was out doing good things. He was performing miracles on his way to get there. And he had other stuff that he was doing for God. And again, Jesus never stopped being God because Lazarus died. Understand, those of you that know, spoiler alert, Lazarus gets raised from the dead later. Those of you that know the story, just because Lazarus died did not stop the deity of Christ. It did not change who Jesus was one bit. And way back in the first part of John chapter 11, it actually says that they came to tell Jesus about Lazarus. And the way they said it was this, they said, Lord, the one whom you love is very sick, is very ill. There's very few people, we know that God loves everybody, but there's different uses of the word love in the Greek language, which is what the New Testament was written in. Different ranges of it. You know, I wouldn't say I love pizza the same way I say I love my wife. Or I better not, or somebody's going to have to give us marriage counseling. Amen. But we, we, we don't have a lot of different words for love here, so we get those things confused. But the way it says when it's the one you love, it's that just deep, genuine, brotherly love that's different. How many of y'all know we got to love everybody, but we don't like everybody? Yes. Don't amen so loud while you look at somebody. That's rude. <laughs> Some of y'all looked at your spouse. Sorry. 
<laughs> Sorry, don't, don't say it aloud. You're making it worse. You're making it worse. I'm trying to let the moment pass. But in all seriousness, we've got these things in life where, you know, we, we have this, I guess, spiritual daydreams where we just think, I'm going to love Jesus and I'll love everybody and they'll love me. And remember what they did to Jesus, people? It didn't go well at the end. And Jesus warned, he said, if they would do that to him, imagine what they're going to do to my followers. You're not always going to like everybody. We've got to love everybody, but you may not like everybody. And you know the difference of those people that you really care for. There's some people I will confess to you if I found out they died tomorrow, I would do my best to be sad. But there's other people that, I mean, it, it would shake me to my core. Some of you have gotten that phone call. I have before in my life. You know, and, and my father, many of you already know, my dad died two years ago now. And he lived, you know, to a good age. And, and even though he, he battled Parkinson's, he had a full life. Man, I'm proud of my dad. I know where my dad's at. I also know the, the terror. I know the fear of when my sister's son, we got the phone call. He'd been in a horrible car accident. He was 16. I was 15. We, we were more like brothers than I was his uncle. He was my nephew. But because my siblings are so much older than me. I'd grown up with this guy. He was my best friend. He was my brother, and he didn't survive. And, and watching how that affected my parents, that was their first grandchild. Watching my, my sister, that was her first child. I, I'll, I'll never, those moments, some of you have those kind of moments etched in your mind. And I don't say this to make light of that tragedy. I don't say this to make light of those moments in your life. But I hope that the enemy cannot not only make us go through those tragedies, but sometimes he'll try to steal truth from us through those tragedies. He'll try to steal our relationship with God, the love that God has for us through those moments. And I want you to hear this, that even in that horrible moment, God was still good. And he was still God. And I, I forget it sometimes because it's hard, man. It's hard when I, when I think about the pain that people go through. And I walk through that in ministry. Some of y'all, I've been there with you in very uh, difficult moments. I'm going to go later today to hospice to be with the Steffes family, with their loved one who's just in their final moments. I don't like those moments, but I can encourage you today that in those dark terrible moments, God is still in charge. God is still greater than any sickness, any death. God can still provide anything. I don't care how bad the situation looks. God is still good. So Martha, I, I, honestly, I relate with Martha. If you'd just been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Have any of you ever felt like shaking your fists at the heavens? God, why? we know God is everywhere. We know we've got the Lord in, in us. We're the, the temples of the Holy Spirit. God, if you'd have just been here, but you know what? She wasn't totally off base because what she says in verse 22. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. She knew Jesus was still in charge. That he still had all power and all authority. I want to skip down to verse 23. John eleven twenty-three. 23. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answers like a lot of us would, like I would. She says, Martha says, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. Somebody needs to hear that. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And this question could be posed to all of us. Do you believe this? Because again, grief reveals things about us, church. It reveals what we really love. And do we truly love God or do we just love what God can do for us? Do we truly fear the right things? Uh, you know, do, we, do we honor the Lord and we want to do things righteous and holy in His sight? Or do we just fear getting in trouble? Because there's a difference. And what do we really believe? Do we really believe what Jesus says? That the one who believes in Him will live even though they die. Even Christ Himself died, everybody. But I love it. He didn't stay dead, and neither will I. I'm going to be like a little jack-in-the-box one of these days, whether I'm in the grave or here on the earth and I meet him in the sky. And I don't care what the devil does to me physically. I don't care what happens to me in this body. I've got promise of forever. Anybody with me? And I'm claiming that victory. So, so seriously, I get it. I know it's hard when you're like looking tragedy in the face, but we've got to look past those things. Look past those things. Just the other day, this happened uh, in... in uh, we, we were out... At Miss Charlene had let us come swim in her pool just the other day. And my little girl, four, we're trying to teach her to swim, to get out there. She had a little floaty thingy on. And, you know, nowadays, my dad genuinely 
kicked me into a pool when I was like four and was like, swim, boy. You know, that's what we used to do. But now we like duct tape them in this little pillow thing that like floats and they have like a parachute and all this stuff. You know, it's just, it's just crazy. But she's got all that and we're getting on the steps and that's my baby girl. I don't want her to be scared. I don't want her to be fearful. But all she could worry about was that she's never been in water this deep and she's standing on the steps and she goes, I don't want to get in there. It scares me and I get it. She's about to cry and I just said, baby girl, just look at daddy, look at me. Don't worry about that and walk to me. Like, those little floaties carry her and she just has to kick her little feet, you know, and she just, once she put her focus on me, she quit worrying about how deep the water was, how, how scary all those things looked. She just looked at me and you know what? She made it all the way to me. And then we went and got ice cream, praise the Lord. It's the same way with our Heavenly Father. We say we believe Him, but then when something jumps up in our way and we lose sight of Him for a moment, do we also lose our faith? Do you only have faith in God when things are going well? That's not real faith. That's fake. We want to make sure that even when life throws us horrible things, that we remember who God is. Jesus tells us a great truth here. He says, I'm the resurrection and the life. As long as you got Jesus, I love that old song, he's all I need. Jesus is all I need. And again, we'll say those things, but where does that faith go when our money goes? Where does that faith go when our youth begins to fade and we start to face some of the aches and pains of life? We can be victorious over those things if we realize Jesus is with us just as much. No matter your age, your financial situation, your family situation, God is still the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, Scripture says. The next point I want you to jot down, if you don't mind, is a truth that I'm trying to learn more and more is what you think about God is the most important thing about you. Now, just let that process for a moment. What you truly believe, what you really think about God. I don't mean just what you say when you're in church or around the pastor. I get so tickled getting in cars with people who I don't know that well. And it's so funny that it'll be like on country music station or rap music or something. But magically, when I get in the car, it always changes to, oh, let's put on K-Love. <laughs> I was at the car dealership the other day because, again, I told you all earlier we were having some trouble with our newer vehicle and we took it in, and it was funny because the guy gets in, and some of them there, I've, I've met enough because we've been back there a lot, but I, I'm there at the mechanic, and some of them knew that I was a pastor, and this one guy I actually know, and he's driving my car, right, and I can hear it thumping. I mean, it's, he's got it going, you know, in the car, and I don't think it was Lecrae or a Christian rapper. If not, they added some funny words, but anyway, he's got it going. The window's rolled in. As soon as he sees me, y'all, it is literally like from boom, boom, boom to how he loves us. Oh, I know he just punched the button and it switched. You know, and we try to do this with the Lord that it's like, you know, all week long, where's our faith? All week long, I'm frustrated. I'm mad at people. I'm shooting everybody down with my words. I'm getting frustrated. You know, I'm, ang- I'm worried. I'm anxious. I'm stressed. I'm all this stuff. When we get to the church on Sunday, though, hallelujah. God is good always. Monday's the coming, church. And God will still be God. And what you think about him, that's the more, most important thing about you. It really is. It's not how you look. It's not, it's not what your last name is. It's not how much money or stuff you got or how many friends you got. It's deep down what nobody else can, can tell. Where is your faith really at? Is it truly in the Lord? Is it only in the Lord when life is good? Or even when it's kind of sad, do you still believe he's good? John chapter eleven twenty seven. 27 Continuing on this story, she replies to Jesus after he asks all this stuff. He said, you know, do you believe this that I'm telling you that you'll never die? She says, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And I've just got this picture of Martha in my mind that I I think might be like some of y'all. Have any of y'all ever praised God even when you didn't feel like it? You gave God credit when really you didn't feel like you have anything else to give to this old world. And if you've ever been there in the depths of grief, again, that's when you you revealed your your truest self. When we can praise God even when we don't feel like it. I don't want to, but I know he deserves it and and, and I need to. 
Here, here is Martha. Her brother is, is, is dead, has been dead four days. Hope seems lost. I mean, she's frustrated because they'd sent for Jesus and he didn't make it when they thought he would. All this stuff is going on in her mind. And, and she still says, yes, I do. I believe you're the Messiah, the Son of God who's coming to this world. I can picture some of y'all. I've been there, so maybe you're like me. I, I, when I, Genuinely, I don't know what else to say because life just hurts. Life is so sad. It's, I'm so down. I don't even really have words to say. And I'll just cry out to Jesus because I don't know who else to talk to. I, I try to talk to people and the stuff they say either makes me sadder or madder. I, I, I try to, in my own mind, I'm afraid of my own mind because the thoughts I'm thinking, everybody, anybody ever been there? You're in such a dark place and you don't know what else to do. You just cry out to the Lord. I know you're still God. I know you're still the Messiah and you, you've come into the world and you're going to make a difference in the world. That leads me to the, the, just the next point. You've got to believe it in what God tells you if you ever want to see it come to fruition in your life. And you really believe it when it's in those moments that you shouldn't believe it. You really believe it when everything, everybody else is telling you it can't happen, it won't happen, it's too far gone, it's too far lost. Even in your own mind, we, we will try to tell ourselves things that the enemy's won, that the, the, the devil's got victory. Some of y'all have been praying for your kids, you've been praying for your grandkids a long time. Can I tell you, I don't care if it's on their deathbed, their last moments, we don't know how this thing works called eternity. But I am believing, if you claim your children, the Bible says you raise your children up the way they should go when they're older, they're not going to depart from it. Some of y'all need to stand firm on believing for your family's salvation. Some of you have been waiting a long time to see promises of God come in your life. Can I tell you, God wouldn't make you a promise if he didn't intend to keep it. He's not a politician. Can somebody say amen? He's not running for office. He's already in charge of everything. In fact, if he wanted to, he'd have given up on us a long time ago. But he says, no, I'm going to come back the next day because my mercy is new every morning. So if you messed up yesterday, I'll be there for you tomorrow saying, let's try again, my child. I still love you. I'm still there for you. Well, somebody to give God praise just for being good. Amen. Y'all getting me all worked up up here. John eleven thirty three through 36, the final scripture I want to share with you. It says, when Jesus saw her weeping, and notice this next part, he also saw the Jews who had come along with her also weeping. Two things. He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And then the briefest passage of Scripture in the Bible, but it's very, very important. It says Jesus himself cried. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, all those people that were there said, see how he loved him. And again, I, I didn't put it in here. Please read John 11 this week. I think it will encourage you. He says those famous words, Lazarus, come forth. And even in those bedclothes, I mean, I could preach about that for a week. It's a great account. It's an, a powerful story. But let's just pause here today. Before Lazarus ever steps forth, before Jesus says those powerful words, he cries. He mourns. He grieves. The Bible even has a book about grieving called Lamentations in the Old Testament. Lamentations is that word to lament, which just means to, to grieve or to weep or to, to just you know, have sorrow. But the really good thing about Lamentations, it's a brief book. It's only five chapters long. Because the Bible says, though sorrow may last for the night, though weeping and mourning may last for a little while, joy is coming in the morning. Amen. And y'all, I don't care if your whole life, and again, I don't mean to say that if you've had a difficult life, I'm not trying to make little of you. But can I tell you, even if our entire life was just wrought with problems, if I had to go through trials and tribulations every single day of my life, I still get forever to just bask in the glory of God. Whatever the devil wants to do to me here is temporary. It's itty-bitty. It's little. But forever will be on and on, everlasting and everlasting. Your loved one may be gone now, but you get to hang out with them forever in heaven. The Bible says God's got a house with a bunch of rooms, many mansions, some translations say. And we're all going to live together. We're going to dwell together. We're going to have no more sickness, no more pain. He'll wipe away every tear from our eye. Y'all, it's going to be fabulous. And it ain't like some timeshare thing to get to go there. You don't have to listen to no presentation. You don't have to put down no deposit. Everything's already been paid for us in full to live there forever. Think about that stuff. Focus on those things. 
when sadness comes because it'll happen. These things we've talked about these last few weeks, life is unfair. That's just part of life. Life's scary sometimes. That's true. Life changes. How many can testify to that? So do these old bodies. Life can be sad. But in spite of all that, God is still God. I want to ask somebody if they would to come to the music before I give you these last few points. And look with me again at that scripture that says he was deeply moved. Verse, verse 33, the last part of it. He was deeply moved in spirit and he was also troubled. It says he saw you know, the family there. He saw uh, Mary weeping and, and Martha was there. Their brother is gone. The one who he loved, Lazarus, was gone. But he also saw the Jews who'd come there weeping. These are God's chosen people, the people of Israel, the Hebrews. And there they are. And if Martha had at least said it earlier, we read it. She said, I know that even now, she showed her faith way back there many verses ago. Even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Now, I just I want to do some spiritual math here, figure out this equation. We know Jesus is not dead anymore. The Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Doing what? Interceding. That means he's praying for us. Jesus himself. Again, the devil wants us to forget these truths. He's praying for you right now. And in the midst of your heartache, I guarantee you, he's praying for you then too. Interceding on your behalf. And Martha says it. I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. So sometimes we'll pray prayers. Any of you ever prayed and you just felt your prayers bounce off the ceiling and fall to the floor? Like they're not doing any good? I know we can feel like that in our flesh. We feel like what we're saying doesn't matter. We'll lose faith. But y'all, you need to realize when you're praying, it's not just you praying. Jesus himself. You've got, we have Christ in us, the Bible says. So when you speak, you speak as a child of God. And he's literally, physically, like in the spirit realm, seated next to God. So you've got audience with your heavenly father 24-7, 365. And he hears you, and you should remember this truth, that whatever you ask, whatever Jesus asks, God's ready and willing to give you if you'll believe for it. It's been four days since Lazarus died. They said, by now he stinketh. It wasn't too late. It's never too late with the Lord. Three things I just want to leave you with before we pray. Because see, I think Jesus was weeping not only because he was sad about Lazarus, not only because he was seeing, it's hard to see your loved ones hurting. And he saw Mary and Martha sad. I think he was also weeping just because all these other people, the children of Israel, the, the Jews that were there, just their lack of faith. Because it says he, he was deeply moved. I think that was the Martha, the love he had for their family, for Mary and Martha, for Lazarus. But he was also troubled. Because I think sometimes God's just wondering, did you forget that I'm God? You come to me, you know, completely heartbroken, completely hopeless. You must have forgotten who he is. This morning, I want to remind you, even when life is sad, God is good. And three things to remember, first of all, is that God loves you. You, you may not feel that way when life is going rough. You'll think, why is this happening to me? Don't forget what Christ went through. And we know how much God loved him. That's his only son. But he loved you enough that he would give that only son as a sacrifice for your sins. That's how much God loves us. Second thing, God grieves with you. Again, I'm not trying to just pull on your emotions because this is a difficult thing to think about or talk about. But anyone in here that's ever lost a child, you can probably relate to your heavenly father, what it was like the Bible actually says he had to turn away. He couldn't look at Jesus on the cross for a time because it hurt him so. The Bible says Jesus was tempted all the same ways. He knows the feelings of grief, of mourning, of hurt. Whatever you're feeling, don't think that God is just this emotionless being up in the sky. He hurts for you and with you. He grieves with you. Even Jesus himself wept. But don't forget this last part because this is, if you didn't hear anything else I said, hear this. God wants to heal your hurt. He wants to. Understand, I used to think, well, we've done it to ourselves, and, and that's true. You know, it's sin in the world. That's true. I get it. I know. But did you know the Bible says that he came, God came to set 
the captive free and the prisoner free. Now, captives, we understand that. You know, we're like, well, yeah, they didn't deserve that. They were, taken, they were captured. You know, I think of these children that get abducted and things like that. Just, it, it's a horrible thought, and I want to stop the evil in the world that would do that. So we can identify, man, yeah, we need to set the captives free. But it also says the prisoner. And what it means there is people that have gotten themselves in trouble. Just like the thief on the cross right next to Jesus. He deserved to be on the cross. Jesus didn't. But Jesus went through all that right alongside them and then said, today you'll be with me in paradise. So some of you need to start, start realizing, even if you're in the midst of grief or doubt or sorrow, pain, whatever, God still loves you. He, he's grieving with you and he wants to heal your hurt. He doesn't want you hurting like this anymore. See, the enemy will make us think, well, we deserve it. We need to go through this because it's payment for things. Jesus already paid all of our, for all of our shame and all of our guilt. So I'm going to ask you if you would to stand with me, please. And God gave me a very specific instruction for how to lead this final prayer that we're going to have this morning. There are people under the sound of my voice that you, you've got hurts. Some of it may be from a long time ago. Do you know, you can have waves of grief. Things, they'll, they'll just creep back up in your life and it just hits you all over again. That's part of the grief process. But there's, there's a different thing where sometimes you'll have a stronghold where you literally, it's like you can't get past a certain situation in your life. Something somebody did to you, maybe you did it to yourself or something you went through and it has been holding you back. And I guess you've just, I, I've, I've felt this way before. You felt like this is just who I am and how I, I will always be. And we've lost sight of that final truth we just read which is that God wants to heal you Jesus didn't care how long Lazarus had been dead Jesus was still God and he called him up out of that grave and the Lord wants to speak to your life to your hearts to your sadness to your situations and bring healing to you this morning some of you I'm believing you are genuinely going to be healed physically because of what God is going to do for you spiritually Part of your physical problem has been that you've been so saddened. It's, it's affected you physically. You've been so sorrowful, so stressed out, so worried. You've been holding on to all this stuff. It's holding you back. And Jesus just wants to let you know he never wasn't God. And he never left you and never forsook you. If you fall into that category this morning, if you've got something deep inside that you know, that even the enemy now is trying to tell you, don't pray for it. It's, just, it's not going to change. It can't be fixed. God can't do it. I'm telling you, no matter what life is thrown at you, God is still God. And if that's you, I want you to be proud of, of your faith in your heavenly Father. Just like I said to Olivia, just keep your eyes on me. Yo, I'm not God. I'm not God. But I'm saying, just I, I don't want you to bow your heads. I want you to say, I know God can help me. And I also know God is the only one that can help me. So before I put my faith in anything else, I want to stand before him and just tell him I trust him and I'm believing for him to make a difference in my life, in my situation. If that's you, would you move from where you're at? I believe there's several of you. Please don't wait. Don't, don't, don't take your time. Move by faith. And I say, God, I need you to heal that pain that's been there a long time. I need you to heal that situation. Some of you, like I said, you're going to see healings in your family. You're going to see it in your physical body. If you'll move by faith to the Lord, if you'll say, yeah, I believe you. Grief reveals the truth. It reveals where we're really at. And you say, yeah, God, I need you, and you're the only one for me. Is there anybody else quickly? I, I don't want to move too quickly and, and miss you. Some of you are dealing with it. I can sense it in my spirit. You're just kind of like, I don't know if I should go or not. Look, man, there's nothing magical about walking down here, but there's something powerful of saying, God, I trust you enough to be obedient. And if that's you, I want you to move quickly where you're at. And can, can some of my prayer warriors, just some of, the, some of our church family, will you come and stand behind these? And I, I want to speak over you. I want to pray over you just like Jesus did way back in, in this account that we just read. Lazarus had been dead a while. Some of y'all been going through stuff a while. Anybody down here testify to that? You've been having these struggles a while. Okay. It didn't seem like any hope. It didn't seem like any way out. And then Jesus, because he's God, he can do the impossible. The Bible says with man, there's some things that are impossible. With God, all things are possible. You can be better. Your situation can change. It may take a little time. It may take a little process. That's okay. When God speaks it, it's going to happen. And Jesus, it says, stood before the tomb where Lazarus was and just simply called out to him. He didn't have to do no fancy thing. He didn't have a church service. He didn't have anybody playing pretty music. He just knew who he was. 
And he knew that what he said would happen. So I'm going to speak over your situation. Here's the thing. I don't even know the details of it. You haven't told me. I just know that God does. And he is your answer. He is your solution if you'll look to him, if you'll trust him. And again, you've got to not give up your faith in him even if things still seem scary. They still seem sad sometimes. Don't lose your faith in Jesus. Church, would you, your seats, would you just stretch your hands this way and pray for these. Father, in the name of Jesus. I speak life over situations that people have given up on a long time ago. Lord, I speak hope to where there once was hopelessness. As your scripture says, we lay hands on them and agree with them by faith that right now as you're praying in heaven, Lord Jesus, you're praying on their behalf. And that's the most powerful truth in the universe. That the one who even Martha said, I know that even right now, right, some of y'all need to hear this, that even right now, whatever you ask, God will do it. We are asking you right now, God, to change situations, to change doctor's reports, to change family dynamics, to heal hurts, to heal abuse, things that have been done a long time ago, hope that has been given up on a long time ago. Restore it. Bring it back to life. Let those things come forth. As you said, Lazarus come forth. Let their life come alive again. Let their faith come alive again right now in the name of Jesus. And let them see the salvation that can only be you. There was not a doctor that could help Lazarus. There was not a preacher that could help Lazarus. There wasn't a song they could sing. There wasn't a little chant they could do. But when Jesus himself spoke, he came back from the dead. And right now, y'all, Jesus is speaking over your life. He is right next to the Heavenly Father, praying for you, interceding for you. Grab hold of that by faith. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. And all that would believe that, all that would believe that even when life is sad, God is still good. He is still in charge. Would somebody say amen in this place? Hallelujah. Could you give God praise if you believe that today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're, you're, you're one of them, but and I'm sorry. I don't mean to be weird. I just, while, while, while we were praying, some of y'all, you're just, your countenance began to change. And can I tell you, it's because God never stopped being God. We just, we just, we just forget it sometimes. We're, we're, you know, we're human at times, but your countenance changed. You're smiling right now, Cabri. And that's the joy of the Lord. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And can I challenge you, will you just stare the devil down, even if that problem looks like it's still there tomorrow, can I tell you, God ain't gone nowhere. And if he said he's going to take care of it, he will take care of it. It's done. It is finished, as Jesus says. You hold on by faith to what you sought God for, and I guarantee you God will lift you up through whatever you've been going through. Do you believe that? Amen. God bless y'all. Church, let me pray a prayer blessing over you. If any of y'all need prayer more, I'll hang around as long as you need. But I tell you, if you got Jesus, you already got all you need. You don't need me. So let's just give God thanks for who he is and for the power of his promises. Amen. Would you pray that way with me? Father, we rejoice in you. God, I thank you. Because I think some stuff, I know it did. God changed dynamically in these people's lives because of who you are, because of the promises of your word. Thank you for the examples in scripture of your son Jesus living things out and through the saddest times of life. He never lost sight of who he was. Help us remember, we're your children. We're your child. And so God, keep us safe until we gather together again. When Monday comes tomorrow, let us remember you're still in charge. You're still God and you're still good. And everybody that believes that said, amen, amen. amen. Y'all go with God. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here.